Okay, everyone. Uh, I've got Chris giving his hand there today. Say, Chris. Hello. <laughs> um, it's only going to be a short video today, really. There's not an awful lot to do. So I've put these plates in down here that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, they're fully welded up now. And like I said, I've put a I'm on a 45 angle. If there's any scale that does work its way onto the back, will just obviously fall off onto the table. And um, I just flick it off. I mean, Chris was sort of brainstorming before and we were thinking of an idea possibly. You know, in my old press we used to get a lot of build up of scale as you were forging everything falling off as it was oxidising. So we were thinking maybe making some form of chute, like fold some thin steel either side and then the front of the table it can fall into something here and collect it so it's not just going onto the floor and no, it's easy just to keep the place tidy. Um, I'm just welding the top on now. And obviously, as we've run the weld on either side of this, the I-beam, it's obviously pinched these cheeks in. So it's made the pin tight. So we've just got the porter press here. Which is this tool here, it's a really handy tool. This is only a four-ton one. And we've just set it up inside here. We've pulled it apart. And we're just going to tack these now. So it'll hold, hold the top of the frame rigid. And then... The last thing to do on here is to have a stand out here which is going to hold the spring to permanently pull on the spool valve so it's always obviously in the retracting setting. So we'll carry on with that now. And that's where we are so far. Alright guys, I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, I'm here just on my Super 7. And all I'm doing is facing off either side of the tube, which I'll be using as a lifting eye to weld onto the frame. So it's all pretty much jigged up in the chuck. It's on my three-jaw chuck. And it was cut on the bandsaw, so like I said, it was fairly rough, so I didn't want it cut in the straps for future use. So all I'm doing is facing off either side, and then I take a file to it and a deburring tool and just clean it up. Obviously, you can see this process on the video now. And then I'll be moving on to the mill. Right, so I'll leave you with this. Okay, this little gadget here, it might interest some of you, I don't know. It's just an oiler for the lathe, for all the moving parts. Obviously, the older lathes require a bit more maintenance. I mean, I quite like these, using them, I find them they're really accurate for what they are, considering it's just a hobby lathe. And the parts are so easily accessible, because he made so many of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, some people obviously have the modern lathes now. I tried that, I had a, a modern Chinese one, but I didn't really find it was very... It was great for the first few, few few projects maybe and then it just seemed to fall to pieces and I rebuilt it and just had loads of mine. 
So when I decided to buy one of these in a pretty poor state and just fix it up and ever since I've had it, it's been fantastic. So it's like my two cents on the, on the subject. Just thought I'd throw it in there. Okay, here I'm just setting up the mill using a basic half inch end mill. I'm just going to take a few passes off this um, ring that I've just made just to give it a flat spot. So obviously I can put it on top of the uh, frame, makes it easier to sort of align when I come to weld it. Could have done it with the grinder, but I figured with the mill already being set up and just as easy to throw it in and just mill the top of it. So you obviously you see this process here, really simple. But I figured it might be interesting for some of you to see. Okay, well, I'll let you watch it now. Alright guys, so here's the press, I think it's pretty much 90% complete now on the frame, there's just one last piece I need to add, which is the arm that's going to hold the, the spring, the tension spring. So as you can see in the video before, I made an eye on top for like a lifting eye, to use a sling if you ever need to lift it. This top plate's been welded on now, it'll weld inside there. Obviously all along tying it together around the back and obviously all the way around. <laughs> Trying to make it too sick. So there's plenty on there to hold it together. Which I can't see it needing it, but you know. Red excess material, so I figured I might as well put it on. And here's those plates I was on about before. Obviously welding in. You 
So now you can imagine the strength going all the way across is rigid. And obviously I put them at a 45 angle uh, just for any scale. You just build up any rubbish on top of them. And I've obviously welded up the uh, the trolley. I may add some more strengtheners to it. I mean, it doesn't seem to need it. It's really... If it's been so narrow, it's very rigid. It's pretty stable as well. Uh, the casters are rated to 600 kilos, so it shouldn't be a problem. And obviously the tank, which is over here, it's been filled for a few days just to make sure there's no leaks. And they're so far so good. So obviously going to the oil tank in the bottom. And then a place for all the tooling, which is something I need to make. I think I'll get the whole crush finished, working, operating it, all piped up. And then I'll think about how I'm going to go about the tooling. And what sort of tooling I want to make. So yeah, there you go. It's New Year's Eve 2019. And yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next video, in part five. Right, cheers guys, I'll see you later.